In this video, we're going to look at using de decorator's varnish. It's used for interior and exterior uh, multi-surfaces to leave a nice satin finish. The surfaces are paintwork, wallpaper, fabric, wood, and plasterwork. I'm going to be using it on the concrete half, fireplace half. I've used some glitter. I've added glitter to the paint. So, sand text masonry paint, the midstone colouring. Then I've added a whole bag of ultra sparkle glitter. I found this on eBay. So I mixed the whole bag with about a quarter of the tin of paint. Give it a good mix, and then I gave two coats. Added two coats with a brush and a roller. So you can't, I mean, you can see the, the sparkle somewhat. It's better at night time when you have the lights. I've got, I have a, a couple of RGB spot lamps that shine down. And then when the, the multicolor changes, you get to see all the, the, the reflection of the different colors of thousands of little reflections coming up. So I'm, what I'm gonna do today, is I'm going to seal in the two coats of masonry paint just to make sure that when people um, I don't know drop stuff on there or clean the half they don't end up removing any of the masonry paint right so the next thing I'm going to do or the first thing I'm going to do I should say I'm going to pour some of this into my tub decent brush I'm just going to apply it all over, allow it to dry, and then I'm going to give it a second coat. It says you can, set, you can give it two coats after um, 15 minutes, which is pretty handy. It, it's, it does have a UV protection as well, so it doesn't matter about the sun coming in through the windows. It shouldn't, it shouldn't um, damage or hinder the finish. So. Rest the camera over here. Then I'm going to add a coat. I've varnished so far. I've varnished up to here. I think you can see the difference. It's a lot more shiny there than it than where where I've yet to do. Um, if you want to see the consistency of the varnish, it's kind of like like PVA. Hopefully, it's not just a really expensive PVA. But the same same sort of colour, same um, same thickness. So, best thing to do when you're adding or applying the brush, go around all the edges first. Carefully go around the border, so you can go nice and slowly up to the brickwork. You want to just place the brush down, fold it slightly away from the brickwork, away from the edge slightly maybe 45 degree and then drag so apply it pull it down 45 degrees and then drag and you ensure that the tip of the bristles are up against the adjacent the adjacent wall there just against the corner drag it along you only need to do one or two um, drag it down one or two times so I went up to the border I've done a second parallel um, application next to that first border and then I'm going to do get into the corner right there right into the corners along the border second parallel line like this and then I'll start doing the back over here 45 degrees carefully well, because you've got the brush on a 45 degree angle the bristles are under quite a bit of pressure so whenever there's a little low spot or a recess the bristles will just flick into that recess however you may have to go back go backwards over it just to make sure you have dragged the liquid into all the little recesses I'm going to go out along the border just up to about there because that's about my maximum reach do that second coat to widen the border and you can apply that a bit quicker because you don't have to be as accurate. 
and then okay so now what I'll, I'll do is I'll go over to the roller and start applying the varnish with the roller when you're doing a job like this it involves any sort of wet trade um, it's always best to start from the left and move over to the right that way you know where you're up to for peace of mind just keep a system always have a system of just working clockwise um, the best example of this is if when you're painting around a window frame and you've got so many glazed sashes you can get lost and forget what, what you've just done and where you've got to do next where's dry you don't end up overlapping where you've already done so start from left move over to the right you can see I've done do that section first done this section that section's just been done so it's still wet hence why this bit of white on there that's a that's just the varnish I know the lighting's not very good in here today it's because it's very sunny outside you'll see it better in the night when it goes dark later on I will ensure to bring the camera down and go over it again so the reason I'm doing this varnish is for it to seal in the paint and the glitter I'm going to give it two coats like with anything any other sort of paint application you give it all two coats two coats of primer two coats of undercoat two coats of top coat and on this occasion two coats of decorators varnish uh, the, the varnish itself is called polyvine so far looks pretty good i've gone for the satin finish so it just gives that that slight sheen you can see the glitter in there so you, you see some light there now So altogether, the price for the masonry paint and the decorator's varnish. Well, I already had the masonry paint in the in the garage, so that was free. The decorator's varnish was approximately ten pounds. Um, it's just a case of time, really. The longest the longest process was making the the radius infills or trim for the floating floor. It was a case of make a template cardboard and then back into to the bandsaw to get the, the to get the correct radius right i'm going to finish painting or we'll finish varnishing this last sections now going to give two coats today i'll take the, the masking tape off later on and then i'll i will um in short to show you how it looks when when it's dark outside I'll just have the lights on in the fireplace back shortly Thank you. 